In theory, things are fairly straightforward, with credit rating agencies essentially having the role of providing objective information with respect to a wide range of debt instruments, from sovereign debt to corporate bonds. As the name suggests, they issue, well, credit ratings. For example, Robert might be interested in quote-unquote lending money to company A by purchasing bonds, with the company in question being located in country A. To decide whether or not it is a good idea, he doesn't just analyze company A's rating, he also takes the sovereign credit rating of country A into consideration in an effort to figure out if the company plus jurisdiction duo makes sense. From individuals like Robert to large institutional investors, quite a few market participants rely on credit rating agency information, and as logical as all of this may sound, there are potential problems, such as the fact that 1. The so-called Big 3 essentially control the credit rating space, with a market share in the 95% zone for Standard & Poor's or S&P, Moody's, and Fitch. 2. There have been examples of disastrous failure on behalf of credit rating agencies, such as the Great Recession, with them being recklessly over-optimistic by granting high ratings to the now-infamous mortgage-backed securities, despite red flags such as the real estate bubble unfolding, subprime loan risks, etc. Or 3. There are disincentives associated with quote-unquote upsetting powerful nations by lowering credit ratings, and various other, let's call them, barriers to objectivity. From the mercantile credit agencies of the 1800s to today's credit rating agencies, there has been a clear role in the ecosystem for these entities for quite a while, but as always, limiting yourself to simply considering them yet another tool in your arsenal would be wise, because blind trust tends to be detrimental to your net worth.